Hello there. Today we're going to be making a faux jade trinket dish. For this you'll need a square cutter about four inches and a dish a little bit smaller than your cutter. Of course adjust the size if you need. I have a cutter that just has a rounded edge that I'll be using on the corners of my square just to round those off a little bit instead of doing it by hand. I also have a larger ball tool, two colors of acrylic paint, oyster white and hunter green. I also have a few alcohol inks, mojito and ginger, along with some basic black, and your staples. Cernet translucent, your acrylic roller, and a tissue blade. I also have some parchment paper to keep things clean along with some gloves. You'll start by first cutting some translucent out of your pack and cutting that into three separate sections. Go ahead and roll these out pretty flat, just enough so that you can spread alcohol ink on these. So what we'll do is create one that's a little bit darker, one that's medium, and one that's light. So you'll see I'm adding a little less alcohol ink to one in Mojito, and then I go a lot lighter with our brown shade, and I add black to only one. Then I go ahead and spread that out with my gloved hand to let that dry a little bit faster. Once they're fairly dry, I'll fold them over and run them through the pasta machine. You don't have to run them through perfectly. You can see some spotting in there and that's totally fine. That'll give it a more authentic feel in the end. You'll see that those first two that I rolled out are pretty similar looking in color. And what I actually end up doing is going back and adding a little bit more color to that, that middle piece. So I'm just adding one larger drop here. So now we're looking good. I now take each individual piece, roll it up, and chop it up. I'll do this with all three of the colors that we just mixed and I'm keeping them in separate piles here but honestly you could put them all together if you wanted to. I then take my green paint and do just a drop or two in the piles and as you can see I've put my pile together here. Now I'm moving that off to the side to dry, and after it's dried, I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of my Oyster White. I don't want a ton of this, it's just more of an accent and to lighten up a little bit of the green that we have. So it's not in hopes of having the white show through, it's uh, something much more subtle than that. So be pretty light-handed when it comes to the white. So now that I have my white worked through, all I'm doing is clumping everything together and beginning to form a block. Honestly, it'd be a lot easier with two hands, but here I only have one gloved hand, so that's what we're working with. Keep in mind when you're making your block what size you want your end pieces to be. Here I got smart and used my acrylic roller to help out. Um, but keep in mind the size that you want your pieces to be. Obviously this is a bigger piece so I'm making kind of a, a bigger block so I'm not trying to make it long and thin. If I were making something smaller I might want that sort of detail so I would roll it out longer. Um, but here I'm, I'm good with bigger pieces to uh, give myself a bigger work, working surface for our end trinket dish. Now what I'm doing here is just cleaning up the excess paint from the outside of my block. 
I like to do this because I find that it leaves less of a obvious joint when putting your slices together. If you have a bunch of paint butting up against a bunch of other paint, it tends to make a straight line and I'm really just not a fan of that. Technically in this tutorial, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna be rolling it out so many times, but um, if you were to only roll this out once or twice, you, you might want to avoid those lines. So I just do this every single time I make a block. So here I'm just rolling all my pieces together just to get them adhered to each other. And I go to lift it up and I left a big chunk behind, but no worries, we can put it back and no one has to know. So here's where I'm going to start taking my sheet and rolling it through my pasta machine. So I've rolled it through once to get everything uniform and now I'm going to fold it over and roll again. So now you see how it's a little bit longer. I want to extend my pattern in a way that is proportionate. So I don't want to roll it through the roller the same way. Every time I want to go opposite direction. So that's what I'm showing you here. See how we're not elongating those shapes? We're making them longer, but then we make them taller. So the proportion doesn't change, but they are getting bigger. If you have any questions on this, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to answer those. So here we're longer. We're going to fold it in half and then put it through your pasta machine the other way so that we're making it taller. And now we're proportionate again. So now I'm just trying to figure out which side I like best. Um, I would pick the, the side that is facing you is going to be the side that faces up or is the inside of your dish. Um, so that's what I would work with because that's what's going to be most visible when it's laying out on either your table or wherever you end up putting this. So now I'm just rounding off the corners. There's a million ways to do this. I'm just lazy. You could use an X-Acto knife, you could um, use your blade, whatever you have around you. Or you may want pointed corners, in which case just leave them as is. That's totally up to you. So now I'll very carefully take this off of my working surface and we're going to place this into your oven safe dish. Keywords here, oven safe. Uh, we don't want to put anything into the oven that won't be able to hold up. Yes, you're at uh, lower temperatures, but just be aware of what you're working with um, and make sure that that's not going to cause any problems. So here I try to get the middle of it mostly into the bottom and then I gently push out into each corner with my ball tool. I'm using my ball tool um, to apply firmer pressure um, and then my finger just adds very, very light pressure. All of this is just to avoid fingerprints, which we can obviously get rid of later on in the process, but might as well avoid them while we can. So now we're all set for the oven and just bake according to the instructions. We're now out of the oven. I wish it worked that fast. Um, I'm just using a sanding bit on my Dremel to shave down those corners. They're coming up a little bit too high for my liking. I just want to even those out with the rest of the sides. Um, please also make sure that you're wearing protective eyewear and a dust mask for this. Don't you don't want to be breathing in anything that could harm you. Um, and obviously your eyesight is very important and precious. So please take care of yourself when it comes to all of this. As you can see, we created a lot of dust. So that, that makes that protective equipment even more important. So now I'm going in with my sandpaper and I'm manually sanding all of the sides just to kind of even them out, make them nice and smooth, um, going through the inside of the dish as well. 
And then you'll see that I'll turn over um, and do the back here. I'm going to work with a variety of different sandpaper grits and what I do is I start with the coarsest and I work down to the finest and I'll add those details in the description in case you're curious as to what sandpaper grits I'm using. I also like to use um, a sandpaper that can be used wet. This just cuts down on the amount of dust that's created um, and honestly is just a lot nicer um, and proves to, to be less resistant um, when you are sanding, making the job a little bit easier because well, let's be honest, it's tiring. Now we're just washing off all the residue with a little bit of detergent and water. And now I'm using a new uh, sealant here. This is called Deco Patch. Not new to the world, but new to me. And what I've done is just applied a thin coat to the front of my dish. And then I let that dry for about 30 minutes. And then I flip it over and apply another thin layer to the back. And then I went ahead and I, I didn't show it here, but I did apply a second coat once everything was completely dry and not sticky to the touch. Um, and it just gives a very nice high shine finish, which is what I was going for with this dish. Of course, you could keep it as is and go with a more matte finish, which would look much more natural um, and less like a polished stone. But I did like working with Deco Patch, so I will be sure to link that in the description as well if you're interested in trying it out. And that does it for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it so much. If you do try this project out, please tag me on Instagram at dittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittidittid